of Salesforce professionals, this is Christopher Hopper, your guest speaker today for another great session of Apex Hours. I want to thank Amit for allowing me to be a guest speaker today. Really enjoy being here. I was doing some research on uh, Salesforce Apex Hours uh, YouTube channel and there's been so many great uh, hosts and speakers for this channel over time. So I feel honored and privileged to have the opportunity to speak to, uh, to the audience here. Um, you can see some of Apex Hours uh, relevant links here if you want to follow them on Twitter or go to the uh, homepage as well, also on the YouTube station. But let's jump right in. A little bit about myself. Um, again, my name is Christopher Hopper. Um, I've been in the CRM space for about 20 years now. I started my career uh, in Oracle and Siebel uh, back in 99. Started out as a developer and a consultant, and then moved through the ranks of various uh, consulting organizations, uh, and being a, a manager, and then also an architect, and then left uh, kind of the corporate consulting route and went into independent consulting for about eight years, playing the role of a business analyst, a solution architect, technical PM, wore many hats uh, throughout my career, and then back in 2016 decided to leave the day-to-day -day delivery side and move into recruiting and focused my attention on Salesforce. thought there was going to be a lot of opportunity there over time with the growth of uh, the Salesforce industry and the, uh, the need for talent and using my technical background as well as I would like to think I'm a, some of a people person as well to help coach those that are trying to achieve additional success in their career. Um, and so I'm also a technologist. I still do trailheads. I'm still creating small apps. Uh, I'm also a blogger. I try to write on LinkedIn almost daily, just about different thoughts or things that I'm researching to help advance your careers or sometimes just random thoughts. I have a Salesforce random thought of the day that I often post just about things that I read about and provide my two cents on. I also speak at a lot of different community events as well as uh, Dreamforce. And then lastly, I'm an active book reviewer. I think I've read a majority of the uh, Salesforce books that are out there, and I write a blog on most of those and post them to my LinkedIn station, or my LinkedIn um, profile. And then my mission here is just to contribute to the Salesforce professionals to help them attain greater career success. A lot of times I speak to those who are just starting out their career in Salesforce and are looking for strategic advantages to get ahead and that will be part of today's conversation. Uh, you can find me at uh, LinkedIn. I have a uh, tag name of the CRM Tech Recruiter. And then I also uh, have a web page, crmrecruiter.com, where I end up posting all of my uh, blogs that I write about. From LinkedIn, I move them over to the CRM Recruiter uh, to be able to search by various topics that I post about. So in today's session, I want to talk a little bit more about how to stand out. You know, as Salesforce continues to grow in the ecosystem, you know, the amount of jobs that are being produced, the amount of uh, economical contribution that Salesforce is making to society, you know, what's happening in the marketplace, from what I can tell, is that more people are trying to jump in in the market just because there's opportunity there and the salaries are good and there's a, a good way to transition your career. But when that happens, uh, it becomes uh, very crowded. And so I want to talk a little bit more about how to stand out from your competition when either you're landing your first position or if you're even an experienced professional and having to compete with others, how we can go about uh, achieving greater success. So I want to show a couple of uh, examples of people who have done blogging or a YouTube video or showcase their apps. I think that's very important ways uh, to display your capabilities and how you can stand out among the others who do not have the, I guess, the wherewithal or the courage to be able to do that. Next point here is about using LinkedIn. I'll give an example of how you can locate a position and then uh, find out who works there, see if any connections there, maybe you have some secondary connections, give you a little bit of insight about how to be able to get closer to uh, the hiring manager or HR and using LinkedIn as the tool to be able to do that and setting personal invites to be able to get your name to the top of the resume stack. And then lastly, uh, we'll go over a resume review. I'll provide an example of a resume that I created. If 
follows playing the role of a certified technical architect just to give you some thoughts about how you may want to critique your resume. And then lastly here, you can always follow us uh, these various channels here, uh, whether it's the, on Twitter or the website, uh, the community group, or using Bitly. All right, let's dive right into some examples of Salesforce professionals who I have known in my network that have achieved success uh, through uh, creating a portfolio of their work and want to show you some examples just to have so you can think about how you can uh, also differentiate yourself. So this is a good example of uh, Pooja who's I think in Australia. She created her own blog about creating her own, her own project about Agni Homes. And here she just talks about everything that was involved with that process. And very creative, uh, very artistic as far as how she created this blog with some good photos in it about what the use case was with Agni Homes. I think this is a completely made up scenario that she came up with. Um, she actually mentions Sales were uh, really good, uh, even though COVID-19 impacted everybody. And so she's going into uh, how to essentially redesign their website and hopefully increase sales and revenue along the way. And so she goes through and talks about the application that she's building uh, using the web elite form. Um, really good job structuring this blog with, uh, with photos and having a little description about those the lead conversion process, using process builder, uh, using quotes to be able to create quotes here and different scenarios for that, what the criteria is. And as I scroll down here, we see the different uh, process builders to be able to do this work. And again, going through different criteria that she's created on her own. She actually created a community portal, which was important. case handling for service reps to be able to handle the different cases that come in and different challenges. Also using Process Builder for those. How the cases were resolved. And that's essentially just, a, you know, and although it's a pretty lengthy uh, blog post, it got other uh, attention from other employers. And I know that Pooja has landed a position, and I think a lot of the credibility came to her standing out and getting over uh, maybe an uncomfortable zone in order to be able to produce a, a, a web page like this to be able to show what she's done and articulate her skills and why she did it, the use case, and things of that nature. Another example here is looking at uh, Stephen Church. So Stephen created his own YouTube channel where he went through and um, created his own financial app. And we can probably scroll through here and see some of the criteria that he's done along the way with this. Um, There's an intro video, uh, intro as far as why he decided to do it. Uh, what is he, you know, it goes into additional details about the steps about the process. Hello Hi, listeners, my name is Steve Church. And we'll mute him and we'll just flip through some of the slides here. Let's see. It's taking a minute to, to load the slides, but it comes up with the object model using schema builder, creates some ERDs. Um, this kind of discusses the full end-to-end -end solution as far as how he created his app why he did it, took it from a spreadsheet and moved the fields and the calculations from a spreadsheet into Salesforce. Um, and this kind of takes a user, hopefully a hiring manager or someone who's interested in his skills uh, to be able to reach out to him, talk a little more about this portfolio of work that he did and hopefully get a little closer to, uh, to getting a job interview and landing a position. Let's see if I can scroll anywhere. Through this. So there's he's defined the data model for us. Building a lightning app page and finalizing the app here. So a lot of details went into this project that he created just on his own because he had a, a, a challenge at home as far as tracking his personal finances 
And so he went through and created an app to be able to get a little bit of uh, uh, visibility as well as experience and creativity uh, to be able to, to come up with a, a, a solution to a problem and using, secure, uh, using Salesforce to be able to do this. Talks about the security model here, which is a big part of the admin certification, as you know. And then he talks about future enhancements. So, I mean, how much better can you get as far as not just developing an application, but also having considerations for what you want to do in the future? So, um, you know, here's some additional things that he's interested in tracking uh, for the future. And one thing he says is, do not share permission of Stephen Church. I've talked to Stephen because I want to be able to showcase what he's done. So, I think he provides a great example of a way to be able to stand out and showcase your work. Um, when I used to be a hiring manager, whenever we were taking people in for an interview, you know, those that brought something with them, whether it's creating an app and having it on a, you know, on a printout, which is kind of you know, rudimentary, but more so even if they had their laptop and be able to show their app on the laptop, I felt like we were always going to give those individuals who brought something to the interview table. Um, you know, step up above, above those that decided to bring more than, that they didn't bring any more than their resume. Um, so I highly advise you to have something with you uh, as far as uh, collateral or digital assets to be able to showcase. And, you know, the employer may not even be interested in seeing it, and that's fine. It's more about you being prepared and ready and having that at your fingertips in case that comes up or you even offer, say, if you have a little bit more time or maybe during lunch or a coffee break or maybe after this interview, if, if you have 15 minutes, I'd like to be able to show you some of the skills and capabilities that I have. And I think this would be a value add to the organization. And, you know, I think a lot of times they'll be willing to take you up on that. And then lastly, we have another example here is Heather Smith. Uh, she also created a YouTube channel. Uh, she is part of the Salesforce Pathfinder program. She came up with her own uh, company called Seaware and uh, goes through the process about some of the challenges that they were having using uh, having sales or lack of sales and using uh, Sales Cloud to be able to optimize and bring additional revenue into the company. And I reached out to Heather after she landed her, her first position as an admin and I asked her about did this portfolio and work that you did help you achieve greater success? She, she said, you know, yes, as a matter of fact, Chris, we talked about it in my second interview. Um, they wanted to see the, the work that I performed, and uh, this helped give me an advantage. So, you know, I, I think just knowing that you have the capability to be able to showcase your work, you kind of step out of your comfort zone, it doesn't even have to be 100% accurate or correct. It's just about you being creative and going outside of just doing trailheads or getting certifications, but kind of forming your own use case and problems and uh, solutions on those problems, whether it's something you've experienced in the past at a previous position, maybe they were very spreadsheet heavy, or maybe they used a, uh, an outdated CRM system, or post-it notes even, or just some other way of trying to uh, uh, write down and, and communicate with accounts and opportunities and contacts and you know, maybe they didn't have any automation in place and things of that nature. And so, you know, I always tell those that are looking for new positions, like think about things that you've done in the past and how can you apply those projects or those situations into, um, into uh, a new solution for yourself using Salesforce as the key. Okay, going into LinkedIn, um, one thing I, I often do is just search by hashtag Salesforce to see what positions are a lot that are out there. A lot of times, we'll, you'll find people that are posting positions, and they'll put hashtag Salesforce at the end of the position um, in order to have people such as myself who search strictly on you know I search by various different things, but I think searching by hashtag Salesforce will at least let you see what's happening uh, in the legal system, and from time to time you'll see different positions being posted here. If you just want to go outside of just searching by the jobs, you can also see different um, you know, industry discussions that are happening um, and things of that nature just by searching by hashtag Salesforce. And then another example is how to go through reaching out and, and talking to folks who have jobs, uh, jobs posted. 
So I did a search for Salesforce admin positions. You know, look how many positions are out there right now, 4,350 in the U.S. I didn't do it by any kind of um, parameters as far as uh, company name or experience level or date posted or location. But in this example, I wanted to drill in to this great minds company who had a Salesforce admin position posted 19 hours ago in D.C. and talk to you a little bit more about how I would go about uh, applying for this position. One thing I look at often is, you know, how many applicants have already applied for the job? And, you know, I don't want that necessarily to uh, cause you to not apply regardless of how many applicants you see, but in this case, you know, only 14 applicants. So I think you probably have a pretty good chance of getting your foot in the door. Um, if you take a few additional steps by just applying and forgetting about it, because it's easy to apply, everybody can apply, and all you have to do is submit the, hit the apply button and, and move forward with your application. But you know, in order to stand out, you want to do something a little bit differently, a little bit creative, and, and it's going to cause maybe a little bit of discomfort, because I want you to do a one-to-one -one outreach to the folks that are internal to Great Minds organization. So here, I'm going to click on the Great Minds link, and what I'll do from here is, you know, if there's anybody I know, for example, one person from from my uh, alumni works there, I may or may not know that person. Um, that's one example of trying to get a little bit closer to the, to the front door. Um, but then I'll click on the all 605 employees there. And what I want to do is put some filters in place to see who would be a good contact to reach out to. So if I search by Salesforce, let's see what comes back. Sometimes Salesforce, sometimes CRM. It just really depends. You have to try different things to see what you find. So here we've got Swathi, team lead, Salesforce admin. So I think she's going to be a great point of contact for me to connect with. And then more importantly is who else is she connected to that I'm also connected to? Right? So here I'm seeing 20 other shared connections. So if I don't know Swathi, there's two trains of thought here. One is I can try to connect with her directly, um, sending her a personal LinkedIn message. Or there might be someone in my shared connection pool that is a close acquaintance to both me and to Swathi that I can ask to do an introduction for. Her. Now, sometimes, you know, of those 20, you may find some that just are shared but not really uh, well connected. But you don't know unless you start asking some folks about if they know Swathi, and if so, are they able to do an introduction for you on your behalf? Um, usually, introductions are you know a lot warmer than just going through the um, you know kind of the, the I don't know you, you don't know me uh, perspective. But regardless, if you don't have any shared connections here, then the other option is to go to the connect route. Now, the other filter I want to discuss is maybe just forgetting about Salesforce and looking at human resources. Okay, so here, you know, usually you don't want to go too high up the, the ladder, but I'll go to rector or manager or maybe, um, you know, talent acquisition, something like that. Uh, in this case, I would probably start with John or maybe Jessica as being uh, the initial outreaches that I make. Um, sometimes employee benefits or uh, administrative assistant, I don't know if those would really be the right resources. Kevin could be a good potential uh, contact for you. But you know you want to be able to make more than one reach out because if you hit a dead end, you don't want to just throw your hands up and be done with it, right? And so you know in this case, I would take at least the top three here, Jessica, Kevin, uh, and, and John. And then, and then also the, the Salesforce contact and make personal connections, right? Make personal connection requests, that is. So if I'm going to connect with John, I'm going to, let's see, I want to add a personal note here. You know, there's so many generic invitations that go out nowadays that I think in order to have a better chance of being accepted uh, for a connection, you want to go ahead and put a personal invite in there. You know, hey, John, I saw that. Your company was actively uh, hiring for the Salesforce admin position. While I'm not sure if you're the right person to speak with, I would love the opportunity to be able to present my resume and my uh, experience in front of the right person. So I'm like just to have them accept the connection request, you know, and then once they accept, then maybe go into a little more detail. 
uh, from that from that perspective. Or to say, hey, John, saw that you're actively recruiting for a Salesforce position. I'd be interested. Please accept my connection request for future collaboration and see what happens. So again, don't just apply for positions just generically on, on LinkedIn. I think that's a, a dead end road for most of us. I think doing that in addition, you know, I think forgetting about this is a direct apply position or situation, but also try to make some personal connections. And if you know anybody who knows somebody has a second degree connection, that's going to be your most advantageous route. And then also, you know, a lot of times what I have is people reach out to me. I try to make a lot of connections on LinkedIn with hiring managers because folks that are in the ecosystem say, hey, Chris, I see that you're connected to so-and-so. You know, how well do you know that individual? A lot of times I may not know that hiring manager or director of HR or whoever it is, but um, I'm sure I would like to think they've seen my name around just because I post a lot of content on LinkedIn and Occasionally, they may, they may see my name here and there, but regardless, I'm always open to, to broken that conversation, um, even if I don't know that individual well. So again, just you have to ask folks for help a lot of times, and don't be intimidated from doing that. Um, sure, you'll get the cold shoulder sometimes. You may get ignored, um, but don't let that uh, tear you from continuing to, to, to do that, because I think there's going to have to be some strategic ways that you can take into account to be able to, to, to make those connections. Okay, lastly, I'd like to go over a resume here that I created. And this resume is one that I uh, mimicked as if I was going to be a uh, sell, or if I'm currently a Salesforce CTA, which clearly I'm not. But, you know, I think a lot of the pieces of the resume here um, help portray my experience and set me apart from other resumes that I see time and time again as a recruiter that are really hard on the eyes. I try to make this one somewhat subtle and uh, but direct and to the point. Um, you know, a lot of times I have folks reach out to me about should I hire someone to write my resume for me? And um, you know, I don't I don't really have um, a strong opinion on that. I guess my my uh, weak opinion is that you know I don't know if if you're going to hire someone to to write your resume for you. They should either be in the industry, know technology, and not just be a generalist. I just think that for them to be able to ask you the type of questions that you want to be able to uh, portray on your resume, they need to know a little bit more about your background, and, and maybe that can come off with a initial consultation session. Um, but I just, you know, I just sometimes I, I feel like we don't need to pay uh, resume writers. If you can just take some examples and uh, take what you like and what you don't like, you know, resumes a lot of times they're they're only the first step in the process. You know, most hiring happens through connections and referrals um, or through a recruiter. And so, you know, if I get past a resume that has good information on it, but it's kind of all jumbled up or it's hard on the eyes, I'm not necessarily going to. Uh, throw it in, in the trash can. I'll still take a look at it to make sure it has some of the key things that I'm looking for. Um, but again, the way the better that you can present the resume, I think it just would help uh, portray your professionalism and show that you know how to write a good, well put together resume. So in this case, you know, I have my name up top here. I have where I currently reside. Some people have their personal addresses on here. I don't think really that's that's needed. I think just having the city state maybe zip is okay. Um, phone number, in case obviously if you want to get a hold of me, uh, my email address, and then a uh, link to my LinkedIn profile. Um, also, I talk a lot about showcasing your work, so you want to have somewhere in your uh, in your resume as far as how they can get to your uh, GitHub repository or your blog or somewhere else where you have some of your digital assets. It can be down here uh, in a separate section, or it can just be up here in the header somewhere. Here in the gray bar, you know, I'm not a big fan of having too much uh, colors in a, in a resume, but I do want something to stick out. So I did put, you know, kind of a high level big picture thinker, in depth problem solver, proven experience integration and securing systems. I think those are kind of the key things that an architect needs to know. And so I want to make sure those pieces of my experience stand out above everything else. Here in the summary piece of it, you know, I just wrote four or five sentences about uh, what I've done, where I've been where I like to go. 
and some folks say a summary is not needed. Uh, in my opinion, I think it does help uh, summarize your, your experience and, and the things that you've done. Uh, just kind of, if you're able to do that in an efficient way, I would advise putting a summary on. But again, resumes are very uh, opinionated and you have to be comfortable with the style and the format of your resume. Make sure you understand what's in it to be able to speak to it. Um, sometimes I talk to folks that I pick out a few key sentences in their resume and they forget that it's in there and so that kind of loses credibility for the individual. So make sure whatever you have in your resume, you pretty much have it memorized so you can speak to uh, in a, uh, a well-thought-out uh, manner. From here, I go to professional experience, uh, what my title is, where I'm currently residing, uh, what the company I currently work for, location, and present. Sometimes you people put full-time employee or contract or remote, just depending on if you want to have that information. Um, then I put a little summary as far as what my direct responsibilities are. I, I, I like numbers, so I put how many sales reps, how many offices were involved, how big the team was. Again, that's up to you if you think that would help uh, showcase your how your kind of the team capacity that you work in. Maybe you're a solo admin or a solo developer in a very small org. Um, and maybe you like that, and, and maybe that's kind of the thing that you're looking forward to. And so if you have, you, know, you want to put that kind of um, numerical n uh, numbers around your experience in this type of organization you work with, I said, you know, that, that's fine. Um, and then I take four or five major areas of my responsibility and, and talk about what those were. So system architecture, provide a, a sentence around that. Security, a sentence around that. Data, integration, development life cycle, things of that nature. Um, so again, I want to have proper white space in here so it's not too jumbled up and it has some key elements of, of my experience uh, as well. You know, one thing that some people have is technical skills and, and soft skills, which would definitely help uh, folks find you when they're doing or in, the AT, in the applicant tracking system. So if you're submitting your resume to a, a LinkedIn job posting, having those keywords would definitely help you uh, be brought up to the top of the stack when it comes to an ATS system, searching on resumes using keywords. And then I do the same thing for the next example here, title, company, location, months, years, capabilities, description of what I did, why I did it, and the benefits that were the outcome of why I did what I did. And, you know, a lot of times you don't really want to repeat your experience necessarily. You know, I see so many resumes that are just very generic and talk with just, just have high level keywords in there around process builder or flows or APIs or apex triggers, but it doesn't really give any substance about what you actually did. And I know that some companies there's some confidentiality involved, but you know, you want to be able to show and tell what specific work that you've accomplished to, for the company to get value added out of your services and for you just to say, you know, you created um, a UI for a better look and feel. I mean, that, I've seen that one line in so many resumes that I ignore it now. I don't really know what that means. I'd like to see some more substance about what you did precisely to, to be able to get a better look and feel out of the UI. Um, you know, maybe you wrote some APIs, or maybe you did a process build, or maybe some automation. Whatever those things were that you've done, what did it solve? What value did did the users get out of it? Did it was there a way to substantiate the ROI from from doing the work? I think if you think about from the beginning when the requirements were really given to you and the outcome of it, there was something that was needed. You produced a solution and what was the ultimate benefit of that solution. So those are kind of things that are that should be part of a resume and the key is trying to say it effectively without it being too wordy and it's I mean, more of an art than an actual uh, science to be able to do that and it just takes time and um, I'm reviewing resumes all the time so if you ever have any questions about you know Chris how does this look, does it come across as being able to articulate my experience well, is it too wordy? Oh my God, you know, do I have too much uh, non-impactful words in it? Things like that. You know, feel free to reach out to me because I'm always happy to to review a resume and, and provide my thoughts on it. Um, again, I don't think there's one standard way to to do a resume. 
I think it's kind of your own personal touch to it. Um, and, you know, I, I can give you my thoughts about how I would do one if I was out in the market looking. Um, but at the end of the day, I tell people that send me their resumes to review. I said, you know, I can give you my thoughts, but, uh, you know, you need to figure out if this makes sense for you. You're not going to hurt my feelings if it's not. I'm just giving you some thoughts about how I think it would stick out a little bit more to a hiring manager or to a recruiter. And then lastly, at the bottom here, we just talk about technical competencies and certifications, you know, having links to your, uh, to your SERPs, having links to your trailhead if you want that. Um, having links again to your uh, digital repository, to GitHub, your blog, whatever it is. So, um, you know, believe it or not, employers, at least myself as a recruiter, if I get a resume and there's links there, I'm going to do some due diligence and look into that and see what you've done and try to get a little bit more out of your experience. And if you've done a YouTube video or I can hear a little more about how you're able to communicate verbally. And again, it just builds a, a better all-around picture for you and allows you to kind of stand out in front of uh, an employer versus someone who just sends a resume across. And I think that's really all I wanted to cover today as far as how to stand out in a crowded job market. Um, hope some of these ideas help. We went over showcasing your skills, creating a blog, we went over how to uh, make connections on LinkedIn instead of just sending your resume across to the to the hiring manager. We talked about um, also about using uh, you know personal invites, using secondary connections, and then lastly about a resume review. An example of if I was a CTA. So, any questions about any of this information? You know, I enjoy talking about it. I've given multiple presentations on it. Um, if you don't follow me currently on, on, on LinkedIn, every day I'm trying to post uh, something around careers or uh, different advantages that you can do from a resume perspective or reaching out to folks, uh, just different strategies that can help you get a little bit farther ahead in your, in your career. Uh, again, thank you to Amit and to Apex Hours for having me on this session. Um, and feel free to reach out to me if I can help you in any way. Thank you.